Hi, this is Krista from Simply Breathe Now, and I'd like you to welcome you to November's insert video. I just want to get started with showing you this black cover. This is the cover um, that I make that's in the Etsy shop. There's various covers, and this time I thought I would show you the black one. They're all the same. They have a little of a um, strap over and then a little bit of the stitching along the side. Um, and then they have four elastics on the inside. The... This one is holding my four journals. So the first one is the Perpetual Calendar, which you also can find in the Etsy shop. It can be picked up at any time. It has blank, 12 blank calendars, so you can fill them up and fill them in as you need be. And there's a quote at the beginning. And there is also, at the back, there is, uh, when was the last time I spread? And at the front, there's a year at a glance spread. So. Um, you can check that out in the Etsy shop and then there's my October insert and then right into November so I did a little bit of a mandala for you on the front that you can color and then there's the title page with just the word November you can add your design as you like you can add the colors washi stickers doodles or leave it blank and then by request I had people ask that the surprise bread be a Christmas present log in November so this is what I normally use for my present log. So the way you do is you just put a description of the gift on the one side, and then who is it for and how much it costs. Uh, you can color code it or you can just do it all in one color. And then what I do is, for example, for my daughter, I will take all the ones that it's for her and I will add them all up and then I will put her name on one of these presents and I will say the cost of the total of how much I spent on her. And then I usually put like a overall total of how much I spent overall Christmas on gifts. So that's what those little gifts at the bottom are for so that you can kind of keep track of how much you spent on each individual person. Plus you have the running tally of what you've bought so far for Christmas. Then we have the memories page. Um, this is in every journal, and so you can add words, you can add um, doodles. Here is an example of mine, if I can find it. Let me see. Here it is. So this is what I'm doing right now for October. So different words, a um, few little doodles, different things that um, are happening, and that's how I use the memory page. You can also have your currently, so what you're watching, reading, listening to, loving, making, and saving for. The next is a goals page or projects page. And the way this works is that you put your projects or your goals here along the left, and then you break them up into the different weeks. And the way I do it is that I put my projects in at the end. You don't necessarily have to finish them all in one month, but um, the first week on the Sunday when I plan, I would kind of break down what I was going to do on that first week and then the following Sunday I would relook at it and I would say okay this is what I've accomplished and this is what I would like to accomplish and so then that was, would be what I put into the second week and then I would work along as the month went on. There's a space for doodles, coloring, um, quotes again notes at the side this is the November calendar it's a little different this month I don't know why I thought I'd change it up but I did um, hope you like it and there's a place for notes then we have the habit tracker so the way the habit tracker is you work you write the days of the week along the top on both lines and then you write what you would like to track along the side so tracking can be anything that you want it can be things like much water you drink what time you go to bed what time you get up how many steps you have um, it can be about personal development, how many books you read, or it can be anything you want. You can track things that you want to know more about, or you can track things that um, you want to do more of. You So what you do is you write what you're tracking along the side here, and then on the first day of the month, you say, okay, did I do this? And then you would check the box, color the box, cross the box, however you like. If you would like to know how to do a Zentangle, I do have a whole video on Zentangling your habit tracker and I will post the link below so that you can have that. Um, but you, you can decide how you use your habit tracker however you would like. 
And then down here at the bottom, you have your sleep tracker um, and then a space for doodles or quotes or coloring or whatever you would like to put there. Next we have the gratitude log and you can use this as you like. So there's two lines. You can either write as many things you are grateful for in the two lines or you can just write two things. There's a space down here at the bottom for any quotes or doodles or anything. Um, research shows that when you are writing down things that you're grateful for, your overall outlook on life does improve and it changes you actually to the cellular level. So gratitude is a great habit to get into. The next is the mood tracker and I hope you enjoyed this one. This is Falling Leaves. I live in Ontario in Canada so um, it's very common in November to see falling leaves. So the way this works is you put your moods down the side and you would associate a color with them. And then you would find the number one for the first day on here. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay, so then you would figure out what mood you were and you would color it associated with the mood. I would use colors like reds, oranges, yellows, browns, greens, different things like that, like what the falling leaves in autumn would look like so that it would be absolutely beautiful when it was done. Next we have the financial report and I did a survey asking all the people who do purchase these inserts what you um, use and don't use and it turns out that not very many people use this at all if anyone did so it will be coming out in 2019 you won't see this anymore but if you are interested the way it works is you just input your income your expenses and then work out your monthly cash flow and then you would do your assets and your liabilities and then that would be able to tell you your net worth then you have a blank page for any spreads that you would like and then we have five weekly daily hybrids. Um, so this is where bullet journaling really starts to um, come out. So you use your key. Oh, sorry, this has come unstuck. Let me use my washi tape and put it back on. There we go. So Ryder Carroll is the um, creator of bullet journaling and I will link his video below and he, this is his key that um, I use. I don't change it. I found it very helpful and useful. So that's what I use. And this is what makes bullet journaling happen is the key. So you have your days of the week and you add the numbers of the week. And if you like, you can add the weather. I'll try to get you um, mine. So this is my current week that I'm working on. So I use that space for my weekly date and the focus. The menu is in this spread. And then I use the, the bottom space for errands because I like to have what my weekly errands are. And then you go and you put in your tasks. So that's where the key comes in. So every item that you wanna do, you put a dot for a task. And then if it's an event, it would have a circle, which is time related. So you would have a time related to the event. At the end of the time period, you would go back and if you completed anything, you would put an X through it. If it was something that you didn't complete but felt you still needed to do, you would migrate it forward so you'd have an arrow to the right. And, um, you would put it into the next day. You would actually write it into the next day. Or if you were done at the end of the week, you might put it on your to-do list or you might put it into the following week's list. Rescheduling is something that you want to do, but it's not following within the time period. So you would write it on your to-do list and it would be reschedule such and such so that you know it was still an unopened task. If it's no longer relevant, you just put a line through it. And if it's a note, you, have, you initiate that with a dash. So at the end of your week, you would have everything, um, everything would be done and there would be reflection to say this is important versus this is not important. So everything is moving forward and you're choosing things in your life that you want to do. Writer Carol does build in that you rewrite things over and over again and that is intentional so that you write things that are important to you and your life. So there are five of those um, and then right after them there's all the to-do lists. You also have your waiting on and your on your horizon list. Your waiting on list is your things that you're waiting on like orders or people to get back to you. Your on horizon list is anything that's in the future that doesn't really fall within this month or this time period but you want to kind of keep it in mind that there's some things to think about. There's a week really view with every um, week so what is working, what isn't working, what needs to change. 
this can be used in any way. Some people use it for how the journal is working. Some people talk about it, use it as what's working in life. Some is a combination of both or anything that you like. So it's not specific to anything. So after the five of those, you have three blank pages and then you have your monthly review. And this monthly review is to celebrate you and your month and take stock. So you have things like accomplishments, big events, um, things that you're proud of. And then you also have places to reflect. So how am I different can be good or bad, personal struggles or what was challenging. Then there's also a place for to have an overview of what you're happening in your projects. And then you have your focus goals for this month and what's happening next month. So it's just a place to kind of before you start the new month to take stock of what is happening. And then this things I want to remember, I use this kind of things that when I hit that month again in the following year, things like don't forget um, this happens. Like in, the, in September, so busy, don't book anything but just getting back to school and getting into a routine. Or August is a great month for um, getting out. Or don't forget you love hiking in October and November. So don't book too many things or book weekends where you can go hiking. Things like that that I seem to forget and then I get in the month, I'm like, oh, why didn't I remember that? <laughs> so that's what I use that for. And then you have a blank page and then that's the end. So I hope this was helpful and that you're enjoying the inserts. Please put any comments or questions below and I'll happily join in there. And I hope you're having a really great day and thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.